What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 39 and we're starting today's episode off here with an FA Cup third round game against Swansea as the Welsh side travel to Vicarage Road to come and take us on here at home. Of course the FA Cup, a competition which last season we reached the quarterfinals in but of course if you remember that was only because of the simulated games we had to play and ended up getting knocked out in those quarterfinals after a simulated game because we just couldn't play any games as we kept on getting those error messages. So coming into this game I was a little bit worried my game wouldn't allow me to play this game. I've got to stop saying game. But uh, thankfully, the uh, the game would load and we were able to play this match. But uh, still, we take on Swansea for the first game of today's episode here. And the first chance of the game would fall in the 21st minute in this game as Bertrand Traore gets onto the ball, takes it around his man with the scoot turn and does open the scoring as well. Very, very fortunate goal this one, but it's Traore's third goal in, I do believe, six or seven games. He's beginning to play a lot better ever since we've taken him out of the usual first 11. And you saw the team, there were 11 changes being made to it. As always in the Cups, I do rest the players because, quite frankly, the league is always the most important aim for me. But regardless, Bertrand Traore, it's really, really funny. But Jack Butland, ever since getting dropped for a couple of games for Daniel Bentley, has come back and looked a lot stronger. We also saw the same with Troy Deeney. We dropped him for a game and he's come back and looked a lot better since then. And Bertrand Traore, kind of the same thing. I didn't drop him for any kind of form reasons, but I dropped him for a tactical reason. And since that, in the games he's been playing, he's been banging in the goal. So another goal for Virgin Traore and he does make it 1-0. Bentley then made a good save and then in the 36th minute another good chance for Swansea but Gomez's shot goes over the line behind for a goal kick. As you can see at half time they had had the most of the possession in the match but as you can see we were still leading by a goal to nil but I had to show you this at half time as well. Look at Swansea's passing for the uh, well for all the players on the pitch. There was only one misplaced pass in the entirety of the first half. Now I know you guys hear me complain about this year's FIFA quite a little bit too much and I am trying to work on that. And I do apologise for that as well, but you know, a lot of people told me that this year's FIFA is more realistic, but I'm sorry, but that's not realistic. Only one misplaced pass in the entirety of the first half. That's just absolutely absurd, but uh, still, it was still 1-0 in this game. Die weren't really close there. We were holding on for the one goal lead in the second half. We weren't really going in search of a second goal, but unfortunately for us, in stoppage time, we would concede a goal, which means that Swansea will take us back to Wales for a replay, and the goal comes through the Swansea skipper, Ashley Williams. I've always found him a very underrated centre back in my opinion should be playing for a bigger team no disrespect to Swansea but it is Williams with the goal and it was just really poor defending from me there because when the ball was crossed in you know we've got some tall players on our side we've got some commanding players on our side it was crossed into the center it should be a simple header away it's not dealt with it's flicked down and then no one reacts to the ball quicker than the Swansea captain who just half volleys the ball in it was a great finish by Williams with the left foot half volleys the ball into the top corner on the turn it was a good finish don't get me wrong but you know we should have defended that it was really, really poor. I don't know why Charlie Austin was celebrating that late equaliser there. But uh, either way, Swansea got themselves a draw and that means we will go to the Liberty Stadium for a replay in about a week's time. So very frustrated with that because, you know, don't get me wrong, Swansea did play better than us in that game. I'm more than willing to admit that. We only had one or two from a chances in the game. But the fact of the matter is, you know, it's it's just really poor defending to throw it away and stop his time like that. But probably a sign of me, you know, tactically being very poor in the second half. I didn't go for more goals, which I really should have done. You know, I thought the one goal would be enough but obviously not and uh, we will go to a replay in uh, in Wales in about a week's time still following that as you can see I decided to go into the transfer market to look for a new player now I did say uh, in the last episode with the transfer market now opening I'm not too sure what players I'll be going in for we don't have much money left over here at Watford after we spent big in the uh, in the summer transfer window but there are some players available on pre-contracts and one of which is Mario Balotelli from Liverpool now he'll be very expensive in terms of his contract with Balotelli on a free transfer I mean he's a big gamble don't get me wrong he's a big big gamble because you never know what Mario Balotelli you're going to get but on a free transfer with us having some striker problems this year you know we've only started scoring goals properly of late to be honest Deeney's only just turned it round obviously Charlie Austin just hasn't got going this year Obiolari's only scored once same one with Tej Vidra and uh, of course when you look at Felipe too he's a young enough and comester a young enough and comester an up and coming youngster but uh, either way, possibly, you know, a new striker could be good for us. And Balotelli would be a big gamble, but he is the best of the bad bunch available right now. But we'll have to wait and see what he says after we offer him that contract. Still following that, we have another game against Swansea here. The second of today's episode, the second and final game of today's episode as well. As we take on the Welsh side at Vicarage Road once again. This time in the Premier League. As you can see, 20 games in, we are in third place with 36 points. Swansea are in fourth place with 30 points. So this is a really, really big game.
thing. Now, this year I said I have aims of getting into the top four. It's going to be very difficult for us. Last season we finished in fifth place. Can we break into a Champions League spot for next season? Well, it is definitely possible, but these are the games which we really do need to win. And the first chance of the game would fall in the 29th minute for Levy gets played through here one on one. And this was a well, it was a combination of good skill and really good fortune. And probably the majority of that was the latter. I got very, very lucky here. I did what I meant to do, in all honesty. I will be fair to myself. As you can see with Felipe, he goes through here. I tried to dummy the goalkeeper. I do this a lot with the fake shot. The goalkeeper does hit the floor. I got that right. But thankfully for us, the ricochet of the deflection falls right back into the path of Felipe, who just taps the ball into the back of the net and makes it 1-0. So I did the first part right. Got very lucky for the second part. And in the end, it was a simple finish for Felipe. But regardless, I don't mind. It's Watford 1 at Swansea 0. In the 38th minute, Jack Butler made a really good save there to keep it at 1-0 to Watford. In the 44th minute here, where the task will get very, very difficult for Swansea indeed because Barrow gets himself a straight red card for this absolutely despicable challenge on Danny Rose. Now, he got a lot of the ball, and maybe that's what he's complaining about, but if you watch this back on the replay here... The challenge from Barrow was absolutely terrible. As Rose gets onto the ball, look at the way that Rose's leg gets caught in between the legs of Barrow there as he dives in from behind with two feet going off the ground there. The, uh, I think it's the left leg or possibly the right leg of Rose gets completely caught in between there. That could have been a serious injury if uh, we weren't so lucky. Rose does get himself back to his feet though. And injuries this year as well barely ever happen, do they? Which is good, don't get me wrong, but it's uh, still a big surprise after last year. They happen so frequently. But uh, still, red card for Barrow, Swansea down to 10 men and in my opinion a correct decision so for the second half Swansea would have a man disadvantage but they would have the first chance of the second half Gilby Sigerson going close once again Jack Butland making a really good save ever since he was dropped for Bentley for a couple of games he's come back and looked absolutely fantastic so still Watford 1 Swansea 0 and from the corner it's crossed in Britain wins the header in the air which is very surprising considering his height but the ball goes way over the bar and behind for a goal kick so still Watford 1 Swansea 0 and in the 54th minute here a good chance here as Buffal goes down the right hand side for us and as the Moroccan gives it to our right back Naomi gets himself inside the area and he hits the deck and the referee gives a penalty after a shirt pull although I will say in Swansea's defense I think it was Tabernu who gave the penalty away he does pull on the shirt of Neom but it's very very light I mean Neom goes down very very softly it's the correct decision for a shirt pull don't get me wrong but there was very 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 little reason for Neom to hit the deck there he didn't really need to he could have passed the ball out of the box I wouldn't say it was a dive or anything I'm just going to say he went down softly regardless of penalty to Watford but how about this Troy Deeney puts it wide and I mean it's the first time in a long time I have put a penalty off target and this was not intentional as well you may say the penalty was debatable but no I wasn't doing it intentionally I was trying to put the ball in the bottom corner and I got it wrong with Troy Deeney I put it wide and it's very very rare I'll put a penalty off target nowadays but either way that was poor and it was still 1-0 still in the 61st minute I thought this was really nice from Buffal just completely skins Montero Buffal does that a lot you know Sometimes he'll show you flashes of genius, but then for the majority of the game, he'll do pretty much nothing. Our record signing has been disappointing for us, but he does win us a free kick here after some nice skill. Costa still uh, punches the free kick away, but only as far as our right back, Neom, who goes for goal, almost catches the goalkeeper out, but it hits the post, and eventually Swansea get the ball away. So still Watford 1, Swansea 0. But after Swansea went down to 10 men, they did have the first chance of the second half, but really, it was all about us going for more goals and trying to kill the game off, learning from our mistakes in the last game, not doing that. We couldn't get another goal, but thankfully Swansea did didn't score late on in this game to get themselves an equaliser again. We do hold on for the 1-0 scoreline this time and get ourselves a very, very important three points as we try and pull away from the pack below us and try and cement a place in the top three as things stand. So very, very pleased with that result. The unbeaten run continues. And again, we learned from our mistakes in the second half. Didn't just sit back and invite pressure. Went in search of more goals. Okay, we didn't get any, but either way, stopped Swansea from playing their game and made sure we would get ourselves to three points. So really, really pleased with that. Following that, though, Balotelli did decline his contract he says he likes it in Liverpool and wants to stay at Anfield so very interesting uh, little follow-up email there from Mario Balotelli we do offer him an improved contract of 95 grand a week and a 5% goal bonus also request some funds from the board as well uh, asked for four million pounds didn't uh, alter any of the aims we have either and as you see the board come back to us and give us 3.6 million I think it is and also a youth player terminated his contract without telling me that he wanted to leave which I thought was kind of interesting but I've checked his overall he's only 46 I think it is so that's not a big deal for us at all and also Charlie Austin 
Kane got himself a transfer offer for one of my former career mode teams, Torino. Uh, Torino want to take him for £8.5 million. We ask for £12 million. Austin just hasn't worked out for us this season. In his defence, he's only been here a few months. Some players take a while to get, uh, get going. But either way, Austin hasn't really worked out as well as I would have hoped. So maybe a move would be the best for him. He can go to Italy to one of my former career mode teams. Maybe he'll link up with Poloski the Punisher if he gets signed for Torino in this game. But uh, either way, Austin looks like he's on his way out of the club. And that's totally fine with me. But that does it in the episode, guys. So thank you very much for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you enjoyed today's episode of Career Mode, then please do leave likes. It's much appreciated. It really does help my channel out. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon. But uh, Laporta coming in, as you can see right there, for £24 million. It's quite expensive for an 83 overall centre-back, but he's 21 years old and he has the potential to 87 and get even better. Now, of course, I know you have Chiellini and I know you have Bonucci as well. Those two would probably be your first choice centre-back partnership at Juventus for the first season. But Laporta, as an understudy for Chiellini and Bonucci, you're not going to say no to him. 